I have a subject too big for me. Uh, have a subject and don't have a text completely yet, but I trust the Lord to bless this morning. Uh, recently, we've had several weddings, and I'm very thankful for the Lord blessing uh, for each of these young couples. I believe that they love the Lord and love one another. Uh, you know, we live in an evil and adulterous generation. Now, in biblical times it was that way. It's not the first time it's been like this. In fact, we're still probably maybe a little step of, of not quite as bad in some ways. But this generation, we're heading that way in a hurry. In fact, we've just made strides very much in recent times. And I've seen, especially I know in my lifetime, even in the church life that I've been endeavoring to serve the Lord for 31 years now, and I've seen how churches and how people are falling away from the standard of God's Word. And I really believe that one of the main problems is in the homes of God's people. And, and in the church, we see they're connected greatly. If the homes are not what they ought to be, then the church isn't. And if the church isn't preaching and teaching, then we find that the homes are not going to be what they ought to be. And yet, I, I really believe that as we think of marriage, that that's the bedrock. It's the bedrock of the nation. It's the very foundation of the nation. If the people of God, and by the way, I, I, I'm very thankful for the nation we live. It's not a perfect nation. It never has been. This is heaven on earth. It never will be. And yet, I believe that, that the founding fathers, now were all the founders, were they all perfect? Were they, did they have everything together? Not at all. And yet, I believe that God blessed them to establish a nation unlike any other. Now, there's good nations out there today. There are some that have kings. And I know that God can bless any people under, under any government. We liable to be there again. I don't know. But I know this, brethren, that God blessed America. And it's not the cause of our political parties, but God blessed America because of the people of God in America that looked to Him and that held up the Word of God because of the churches, because of the fire from the pulpits and yesteryear. And yet we find today that the fires have gone out, that the people of God had watered down, that the people of God are no longer teaching and holding to the Word of God. Thereby, we find that America is on its path downward. And I tell you what, one of the biggest reasons, again, is because of the breakup of the family. Any community, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about white, Hispanic, or black, any of the community and all the different groups of people in America, we find because of the breakup of the home, because of, 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 the, of the failure of the home. Now, I've got to interject this is that, you know, God tells us very much to, uh, to help the fatherless. And I know my father died when I was young in the difficulty of being a child without a father. And yet there are many children today that don't have their fathers because of death, but even more because of not having their fathers in the home because of the failure of fathers or fathers and mothers. And, and because, of a, because of divorce in our land. Now that's something, and, and there's many of you here today that, that have had divorce. And some perhaps in your wrong, and others uh, by the wrongs of others. I'm not here today to grieve you. We're not here in that point nor for that reason, but we're here to encourage you to be the teacher, to encourage you to try to restore. You can't wrong past, but you can do what's right today. And I believe and I see many of you that are endeavoring to do that. And in one of the main things, I believe if America is going to be saved or delivered, it's got to be a restoring. Because sins can be passed down from, from father to children. And what I mean by that, you see a repeating of the same sin. You see things that, are, that happen and happen again, but it doesn't have to be. 
And, it, and it's time that we put a nail down. It's time that we put... You know, there's times that divorce has to occur because of the breaking of the vows of one. Uh, God hates divorce. And even if things can be resolved, if that occurred, I believe it should be. But when it cannot be, then brethren, I believe when there's not a repentance in the lives of one, then divorce has to occur. But God hates divorce because He knows what occurs to the family, to the children, to the church, to the state, to the nation. Uh, we see great, uh, great troubles and problems that occur. And, and so today, now I've got, to, I, I've got to interject this. I'm not going to be able to cover everything. I'm not going to do a very good job, I'm sure. But I'm going to do the best I can. And one of, the, one of my heart feelings, one of my desires, uh, you have a pastor in this church and other counselors and men that are adhering to the Word of God, that are endeavoring to preach they're imperfect individuals, but endeavor to preach and to teach from God's holy word. Now, as you have children, many of you, some of you younger ones now, uh, you, you either have small kids or, or Lord willing, God's going to bless you in the future to have children. I believe it is your duty and your responsibility to begin to teach your children the Word of God, to teach them the seriousness, the very beginning, the very foundation we find, it, where God lays down the foundation of marriage. And, and you need to teach them. And as, as a pastor and as those of you that have children, that have children that have come to the term of marriage or the time of marriage, I believe with all my heart that you need to utilize your pastor and the other counselors here and you need to support them in the biblical decisions. Now number one, there are, there, there's great, there's right and wrong. If your child, you need to begin, and, and we're going to try to cover it from that way I think, is from the foundation of your family. You have the greatest duty to teach your children the very foundation of marriage. And, and as Brother Billy and as others in this church stand and teach or counsel, you have that duty to, to, to stand behind them and to support them in biblical counsels. Now I want to ask you this, or I want to make a statement more than that, is that if someone is a little too stringent in, in your mind, if the results is good or the teaching is good, then I'm going to tell you, I'd rather have someone to counsel me that might be a little more stringent than to have someone that is not, that is loose, or that, that will not stand firm in the Word of God because the results will not be as well. And, and one of the first things, you know, people come to me all the time wanting me to marry when they find out I, I have a... Uh, uh, that I'm a preacher. And what you have is most of the time they come and they just say things like, uh, look, look, will you marry me? And they say, oh, we love one another. Well, so far I've never had anybody come to me and say, I want to marry him. I can't, I can't stand him. I think he's ugly as all get out, but I, I'm going to marry him anyway. Will you perform the ceremony? And you know, it's just not that way. People come as a rule and they think, oh, they're in love. And yet what you have is, what is biblical love? You you have that the Bible teaches a commitment. I remember going over recently with a young couple of how that, that really and truly, and this is something that you need to take in your minds, is that you need to love one another even when you don't like one another because that's the case. It's not always about life. There's times that you might not even, you might even consider your spouse your enemy. And yet what does the Bible say about your enemies? Love your enemies. You know, uh, sometimes your enemies are even those of your own household. And yet, I, I, I really believe with all my heart that you and I, that we need to submit, A, as a pastor, he's here to look out for your, your souls and the souls of your children. And brethren, I want to tell you this, is that what you need to understand greatly is that as a pastor teaches and as a pastor stands or as one in the church that would give counsel would, would stand and, and, and would encourage, you need to listen. You know, quite often parents force their children or to speed the ceremonies up. 
I want to tell you this, is that you need to make for sure that your children get a good foundation. I'm not trying to put a guilt trip on anyone that had things in the past, but I want to tell you this, is that children need a good foundation. Number one, if they come to marry a unbeliever, I have no authority from God to marry them into that situation. And, and a lot of times the, the problem is this, parents and grandparents say, oh, I married an unbeliever. We weren't believers whenever we, we got married. Yes, I want to tell you, but the Bible says that you're not to be unequally yoked together. And now it might have worked out for you. But it don't always happen. Most cases, it don't happen that way. Most cases, it ends up in divorce. And, and, you know, and so people get mad. People get mad. You can't marry me. You think that, I, that I'm no good. You think you're better than me. No, that's not it at all. It's just that you've got to lay a foundation. You've got to have a standard. And you know there's problems that they're going to have when they marry an unbeliever and it's totally against the Word of God that I would marry anyone, a believer and a non-believer. I mean, if you're a non-believer, then there's no need to come to me to marry because I'm a believer and in the church of God. There's, there's laws out there. I mean, you can go down the courthouse and get married. And so, you see, we have lowered the standard. And quite often, and I realize again, that some things we might not have a complete standard in the Word of God of how to give counsel, but I want to tell you this, is that today, 50 years ago, when some of you got married, 50 years, and perhaps some of you more, uh, things were a whole lot different than they are today. And, and you know, I know people that married and just a couple of days, you know, they met in a couple of days they got married and, and they're living together today uh, through 50 and 60 years of marriages. And, or, or a marriage, that is, not more than one. <laughs> but nonetheless, it, a lot of times it can work. But I want to hear today that it's changed today. We live in an adulterous generation. We live at a time when people just marry and get divorced and people just, uh, people just think that marriage is like buying a car. You get tired of it, you trade her in, you find you another woman that looks a little better, a little younger. You find a man that will work a little harder or a little more romantic. And women reading all these romance novels that just, you know, the husband's got to be all this and that. Well, I want to tell you, the idea again is that you love one another, you stay committed to one another even when, even when you don't like one another. Now, in the Word of God, I believe that differences can be solved. Now, like I said, I don't completely have a text, but I, I believe that, I, uh, that in Deuteronomy chapter 6, I'm going to start there. In Deuteronomy 6, now some of you, there's some young teenagers coming up. Now, I'm going to tell you what, that as you, as you began to marry, and I believe with all my hearts that parents need to play a part if your child is wanting to marry someone, now they can leave your house when they get so old and you, you don't have anything to do about that. But if they're endeavoring to date or to go with people that are unbelievers, to, to, to hang around, now I'm not telling, you know, a lot of times people want to use their children as, uh, as ministry. And a lot of times children even have it in their mind. Oh, I'm going to, I know he might be drinking or he might be drugging, but I, I'm going to change him. I'm going to tell you what, that, that's not the idea that you do in marriage. Because there is a good chance that how the man or woman, and by the way, you know, used to, we didn't have to address this, but if it is a man that's seeking a wife, then you find that you're seeking a wife. It's a man and a woman. It's not between two men. It's not between two, two women. God ordained marriage. He made the man and he took the rib from the man and he, uh, he made a woman and God ordained marriage in that way. And there's no exception. I don't care how you feel. I don't care if it's your child. I don't care if it is your grandchild. The Word of God must be adhered to. Otherwise, the nation, the family, the nation will not stand. That's God's word. And so we need to see in Deuteronomy 6, I believe that again, the very foundation, one of your duties as a parent is to give guidance and teaching. Now I'm going to read uh, some in this chapter. 
He says, beginning of one. Now these things are the commandments and statutes and judgment which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whether ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and commandments which I command thee, uh, uh, command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons all the days of thy life and the days may be prolonged. Now, now I, I want everybody to understand. I know that this was written to Israel. I know that the commandments are, are, you know, was written to natural Israel, but I believe that they're affable to us today. And, and I do believe, even though, you know, maybe not the exact things in some areas or whatever, yet we find we're not without law to Christ. The Word of God is affable to us. The laws of God tell is, is certainly there, uh, and, and, and they stand just as much today. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear, uh, you know, all the various commandments, and we could go down through them if that was our desire, but, but that's not it today. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And you see, all the laws, all the things that we're to, to adhere to and to go by, they're for us as well as the people of God. And they need to be taught. Listen here as we go on. In verse 3, Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee. You see, the laws aren't to make you feel bad. The laws is to, to where it be well with thee. You want to know why it's not well in homes? You want to know why it's not well in the nation? It's because, and why it's not well in many churches, because the laws of God have been removed from the homes and from the churches throughout America today. Thereby, we find that, that there's great trouble and great problems. Now here we go on, and we find, he says, Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, that ye may uh, increase mightily as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord uh, our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently to thy children. Hear that? Teach them diligently to thy children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets before thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house, and on thy gates, and it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto, the father, unto thy father Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give thee a goodly city, which thou buildest not. I'm going to stop there. But what I'm after here is this is something you need to be doing in your house continually. Now I know a lot of times in homes across America you hear yapping and fussing and fighting. The home should be a sanctuary. And the law of God should be something that is, that is held up high. Because you see, really and truly, what does Ephesians tell us? Let me just turn over there and read this for you. And I'm coming... Right back, hopefully, to the point. In Ephesians now, about the marriage, listen to the Word of God here in Ephesians 5. We find in the Scriptures here concerning marriage, you see, marriage was ordained of God. And we find in this passage, listen here now, beginning in Ephesians 5, it says... In verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Now there's a submitting that we're to do in the family uh, in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourself to your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of a wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he's the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to her own husband, uh, excuse me, therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be subject to her, to her own, to their own husbands in everything. Husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any 
any such thing that it should be holy and without blemish. So, so men, so ought men to love their wives as their own body. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Bear with me. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, nor nourish, uh, excuse me, but nourish and cherisheth it, even, uh, excuse me, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in some particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Now, what I want to get from this and, and put them together is that you need to be teaching these things in your home. You need to be teaching grandparents to your grandchildren. You need to be teaching them that they need to be dating only believers. And by the way, quite often parents let their children see and date at such a young age. And we find, well, I can't really control. When they're under your roof, they should be under your control in a godly fashion. And, and, and you might have blew it before, you can't help that, but you can help today and help what you teach and help what you teach your grandchildren. Is that what we need to understand is that in the homes it needs to be taught. It needs to be, there needs to be instruction. You know, the Word of God is very plain. Young ladies, you better find a man that you can submit to. You better find a man that loves the Lord. If you can't find a man that you cannot submit to, then I want to tell you today, you don't need to marry him. You need to be single if you don't find one that you love and that you can submit your life to. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to be happy and in the Lord's will. That don't mean that your husband is a tyrant. That don't mean that he has a uh, has such a tyrant type of attitude about you. But I want to tell you is that the husband is to be head of the woman. But who is the head in the home or the homes of Christian churches? It's not the husband. You know who the head is? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the head. And, and, and the husband is to be head of the woman and and there's decisions at times to be made that the man needs to be making. I want to tell you today that the problem we have in America is that men have failed to raise their children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord to teach their children. And wives have failed to submit and to be the, uh, to be the help meet. And that word help means to be a help suitable to their husband. And so what we need to do is to restore the biblical teachings in the Word of God and you have a, a duty and responsibility to do such. And quite often parents get all upset if a preacher or a person uh, cannot marry someone when they're marrying them into a, uh, perhaps even an adulterous situation and say, yeah, but that was a long time ago. I want to tell you, the Word of God is very plain in the Corinthian letter and in Galatians that fornicator or adulterer cannot enter into the kingdom of God or, or the kingdom of heaven. I'm not talking about them not being able to go to heaven. I'm just telling you that they're not going to be able to have the peace of God in their lives or in their marriage. Now, uh, this is something that is up to you. You're to teach your children. And as your children date, as your children... Uh, by the way, if you know your pastor has a high standard, then you better be getting your children ready for it. And don't come running to me. Don't come to me saying, well, he won't marry them. Don't you come running to me because I will not perform any more marriages whenever it's under that situation. It's, and thank God for the one that recently was performed. I believe and feel real good about the, the situation in a lot of ways. But I want to tell you this, brethren, that we need to understand that there is a standard. And parents, you have a duty and a responsibility to adhere to the standard and to the man of God that God has. I'm not talking about in a cultish way, and, but it is looking out for your soul and for your good. Now, you can go find plenty of people that attend tell you. I, I point out people all over the place that tell you you marry anybody you want. You love him. He loves you. You know, you just, just get married. Don't worry about any of these other things. 
It worked out for me 50 years ago. It'll work out today. I want to tell you, all of us might have a little different standard to a degree on counseling or whatever, but I'm going to tell you this, is that we need to adhere to a strong biblical counsel. The foundation's got to be right. Now, can it work if the foundation uh, starts out wrong? I know people that have, that have corrected things, and their marriages are good. I know people in marriages that have worked. But brethren, I want to tell you, without that foundation right, it won't ever be like it ought to be until it's restored. And, and unless that foundation gets right, they're going to have heartache and trouble and problem. So young ladies, we have several here today, and young men, as you think about marriage, you need to, number one, find the right kind of individual. If he don't love the Lord, and I'm not talking about just a church attender. If he don't love the Lord, you don't need to have any part. And if you can't, if you can't marry him that day, then you don't need to marry him. And what I mean by that, if his standard is not up, don't think that you're going to change him. If he's drinking or drugging, if he's not working, if he's not holding to the biblical standard of what a man ought to be, can he change? Yes. But it's not your duty to marry him and to change him. You find one that you can love. You find one that upholds the standard of God. Or you don't dare marry him. Yeah, but i got to marry somebody. No, you don't. You be married to the Lord. You can, you can trust in him. And God will supply you a companion. And if not, God will be your companion. Now, now one reason, and I've got I've to turn here. I'm going to read just a couple of passages. People have this idea that, again, that you can marry and divorce, there's just no problems. But listen to this now in Matthew chapter, chapter 19. He says in verse 4, And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read chapter 19 of Matthew? that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. That's plain. There's no question. We don't have to have a church meeting and decide whether a man ought to marry a man or a woman ought to marry a woman. The Bible's very plain about that. Male and female. And it's ludicrous. It's idiotic. It's just plumb out crazy that you would even think, that a nation would even think otherwise. And here he said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. By the way, there's got to be a leaving, and there's got to be a cleaving. You, you know, I see a lot of time women, and by the way, parents, mothers, uh, think about being a mother-in-law, don't you interfere. Don't you fathers, don't you interfere with your children. I'm not talking about if they're doing something ungodly. But I'm saying, you're not to be interfering. There's got to be a leaving. There's got to be a breaking away. I'm not saying that you can't fellowship. I'm just saying that they have to become one. And you know, the problem is, you, you know the problem in becoming one when you marry? Is both of you come together and you have luggage. You have problems from the family. It don't matter which family you talk about. It, I tell you, there's some people here that I esteem very highly. And yet I find that it doesn't matter what family. We all have error in our lives. And you should want your children to be better than you. Not to have to go through the struggles of life that you went through. And that's something that you need to be teaching and understanding. Uh, and here in this passage he goes on. I think we'll start up in, in 7. It said, And they said to him, Why did Moses then give commandment of a written of divorcement to put her away? He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery, and whosoever marries her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. Now, brethren, I, you can find plenty of people that disagree with that, but that is Bible. I don't care if it's your child, your grandchild, or it's you. And it's not God being hard on us, it's that God's design is for you to have the best. He's, he's given marriage. He instituted marriage, and marriage is for the best. And marriage, I I want to tell you, it's what will exalt a nation when marriages of the homes of God people are what they ought to be. But if you have corruption in it, some of you, your spouse has done what they ought not. 
You can't affect what happened there. Now you can look to God and you teach and you stand where the Word of God says and you be what you ought to be. That's all you can do. And it's up to us to try to help you in any manner, in any way that we can. We're not to look down or try to whatever, uh, uh, be mean to people. But I'm going to tell you today is, is that we've got to adhere to a standard. If you, anyone here divorces their spouse and it not be for fornication, that is your spouse didn't have uh, you know what? Uh, seeing other people. If, if you uh, if if you divorce your spouse for any other reason, save fornication, and you remarry, you're committing adultery. And it don't matter what the preacher down the road says. It don't matter even if I say it's contrary or it's okay. I tell you, any man of God that will say contrary is not a man of God. Because God's word is plain and explicit on this issue. When you marry, you marry for life. Unless one breaks a commandment. Unless one, and by the way, husband, I mean, I have people all the time say, yeah, but you don't understand my wife. You don't understand my husband. I want to tell you, men, you have a duty and responsibility. When you read Ephesians, you have the greatest obligation. And, and you know, right now, Agnes could get wives in the flesh, and she could leave me. Do you know... Most of you know me. You could say, boy, that girl. <laughs> There's people I'm sure where she worked would say, you go, girl. <laughs> you get ready. You can have better than him. But I want to tell you what, in God's side, if you do what's right, you know, right now, what I'm trying to say is in every marriage, there's problem. Nobody's perfect. And you know what? People try to look to their spouse for make me happy, make me joyful. Make me fulfill my life. It ain't going to happen. Only God can fulfill that spot. Only God and only you by looking to the Lord can be happy. Your spouse ain't going to do it. Now she can be a help me to help make me happy. We can be helpers. I could be a helper of hers, so to speak, to, to, uh, to strengthen her in the Lord. But you see, this is what needs to be here to. This is what needs to be taught. You need to teach your children. Hollywood is not the standard bearer. Uh, the magazines is not the standard bearer. And even people down the road that is telling them it's all right. You don't have to stay married. You don't have to put up with him or her or whatever. I'm going to tell you, God's word has a different say. And so it's up to you to teach. And you might say, well, Brother Philip, easy for you. You don't have children. Do you know right here, I'm not very important in the eyes of men, but I'm going to tell you right here, Right here among this body and people I know, people around this community, do you know it's important that I hold, do you know they look to me? And not only I, but they look to you as well. And if I turn my back on God's Word, not only would people say, yeah, I knew he was like that, but people, it will bring down families. And children look. And I'm to hold a standard. I might not have children, but I have, as it is in a lot of ways, children out there are people looking to me and people looking at Brother Billy, people looking at other, at other people in this body, what you do. And, and you know, the thing of it is, it don't even matter if you've been married for 10 years, 5 years, 2 years, or you've been married for 50 years. It will affect your children. It will affect your grandkids uh, in, in you divorcing your spouse and you leaving your spouse. Hang in there. It can get better. Look to God. It can get better. A marriage don't have to be a place of distress. It can be a sanctuary. It can be a blessing. And what I want the parents here to understand is that you want your children to have the best foundation to start on and you don't want them to start out with all kind of problems. Now I've got to mention this too. Is that as a family or as people that believers in Christ... <laughs> Some of you have jobs that will keep you away from the church periodically. Maybe monthly at times. But I've got to mention this. And when you're out of town on vacation, you better be fine in a church somewhere to be with God's people. This idea you go on vacation and you leave God out is an idea from the devil. But I want to tell you this. As much as possible... And I will be this. I'm not going to put a timetable. I'm not going to put how many times or nothing like that. But if your job 
If it's, and a young couple I talked with recently, and that's one of the things I stress as well. If it, it keeps, because see the idea, you know what the world, you know what everybody in the world is thinking about money. Money. I'm going to tell you, my mother and father-in-law was married, and they lived in a barn for a period of time till they built their first small house. Now, somebody come up to you and say, I, I want to marry your daughter, and we're going to move in the barn down the road. You know, many of the time, not my child. You ain't moving my child in the barn. Well, you know what? It, it's a little different thing. People didn't expect as much in that way. But also, people had commitment to one another. And certainly, I believe that finance... I, I, I'm just rambling here, but I've got to talk to you. What about finances? So many of the children I talk with don't have any idea, don't have a clue, don't know about tithing, don't know about finances, don't know about how the role of husbands and wives, wives to submit. They have been taught, have been instructed. And it's up to you. If your children don't know, you know whose fault it is. It ain't the preacher, but it's your fault. You're the one that has failed as a parent in teaching your child. Grandparents... It's up to you as well to teach your grandchildren when you have that opportunity. And so what we need to see today is that it don't matter what the world says. If you want a revival in a church, my goodness gracious, if you take the biblical standard and apply it to most churches in America today, you'll probably cut out half the population. So people don't apply it because they're more concerned about number. They're more concerned about money. They're more concerned about how they look. I'm going to look mean. I'm going to look bad. I'm going to, I'm going to sound bad. I think some one of the youngest at camp was talking about me hollering it out there. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, all preachers don't preach like this, by the way. This is kind of my way. Nonetheless, what we need to adhere to is the Word of God, the standard. And he says here, he said, I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whosoever marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. I don't want anybody here to have to go through that. Brother Clay, he sees it all the time. Brother Billy has spent thousands of hours in counseling people over the years you know what's amazing when there's trouble parents you'll hunt brother Billy up you'll hunt him up help my child but wouldn't listen to his counsel whenever he was talking about discipline wouldn't listen to his counsel when he was talking about your child uh, their attire women older women what are older women supposed to do in the church teach the younger how many of you are teaching these younger girls? Some of you are. That's your duty. Preachers shouldn't have to address all these issues. You, you know, of clothing and attire. Now I'm thankful we have some very godly ladies here. But that's the older women. Your responsibility. Older men. You know what you need to be doing? There's younger men. Some that's married. What you? I forgot. I, I done got there, hadn't I? I done got in the place of being older. It's our duty to teach these younger men and the younger children coming up, younger men. They, we teach them one way or the other. And, our, and, and whether we apply ourselves and are faithful to the house of God, the attendance of God's house, whether we're there, whether we're there in obedience, uh, uh, you know, how we live our lives. Whenever you go in your, whenever you're at home, am I saying your voice is never to raise? No, I'm not saying that. Certainly children need to know and there needs to be a warning and so forth. But I want to tell you this is that, that it, don't, it needs to be a sanctuary. They don't need to be yapping and fussing and all of that. Certainly not cussing in the house of, among the homes of God's people. But all of it, you're teaching your children. By the way, you know, I'm amazed. Parents that teach their children is a good education important. That's a good thing, isn't it? Teach your children. And, and to begin with, you don't teach them calcula, uh, excuse me, uh, algebra and uh, whatever, uh, trigonometry and all of that. I done got ruined by saying that calculus. You don't start out with that. What you teach them, you teach them how to add, times table. 
And you know, most parents, you don't just send them off to school where, you know, you teach them ABCs. My mama taught me, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. What, you teach them when they're young, don't you? You teach them when they're, you rear them up, you teach them, you train them. And yet, you know, I'm amazed at how God's people aren't teaching the basics of Christianity in the home. Teach them the Word of God. Teach them. You know, we, we don't expect them to, to, to write an essay when they're in, you know, in beginning their ABCs. And, and the same thing, you know, a parent sometimes think that the marriage, that, that you know, they're going to have it all together and they ain't taught them nothing. Your child should be prepared that when they leave your home, they know how to conduct a home. Your child, my goodness, some women don't even know how to boil water. Your child ought to know these things. How to be a good wife to their husband. How to be keepers at home. That don't mean you got to stay there all the time. I hope you know from the preaching and teaching over the years, certainly a woman can work, but never to interfere from the house or if there's children involved, the main things need to be centered around the husband and the home. I've done a sorry job at preaching this. Mm -hmm. It's just so big. People can come together and sing Kumbaya all they want. Come by here, Lord. But they're not going to come by the homes until the homes are built upon the Word of God. You can get together and you can have religion and you can have fun. Now I want to tell you, Christianity is fun. But the laws are not to make you feel bad, they're to help you. The stipulations, children, your parents, I believe there's some good godly parents here that, are, that have laws in their homes. They're not to make you feel bad. You know why they have them there? The best of their understanding. Now we have variations of what I might be harder, you might be harder in this way or whatever, as far as the standard. And, and there's lead ways in there. I wouldn't, if I had kids, I wouldn't be the perfect parent and neither any of you. So don't go around judging one another unless someone is, is departing clearly from the Word of God. And, and encourage. A lot of time, you know, you can encourage other parents and other, other families. And, and again, older women, it's your duty. We've lost that. We've lost the teaching of the family. That's what's wrong with the church. Is that we are not passing the baton on. It's a relay run. We're not passing the truth on. We're not passing the standard on. That's why we've got to stay, uh, adhere to the standard of divorce and remarriage. It's hard. If you get divorced and it's not for a biblical cause, the right, you know, for fornication, then I want to tell you, if you remarry, you can't be a member of this church because there's a standard. That's just how it is. And it's hard. It's difficult. I know people that meet someone else later on that are wonderful, wonderful people. But it's just not that way. God's Word is explicit. Why? Because He wants to make it difficult on you? No, because the, the families, because of the nation, He seeks to exalt a nation. And the only way is when the Word of God will be adhered to. Utilize those around you that loves the Lord. Utilize those that know the Bible. And brethren, utilize the Word of God. Teach it. And I'm not saying, you know, at, uh, at, uh, at camp, one of the things when I preached, I tried, to, I tried to lay a very good foundation, whether I did or not, or tried to uh, teach the importance of it, is that nature itself teaches so many things. Everything don't have to be a two-hour Bible study. You can teach your children. When you rise up, when you sit down, when you carry them fishing, when you carry them hunting, talk to them about the Word of God. Because Hollywood's talking to them. The school's talking to them. They're telling them things that are not so. That a man and a woman, or a man and a man, or a woman and a woman can marry. Or they're teaching cohabitation. You know how many times I meet, and so many of them are church members, I meet children that are married I mean, excuse me, I meet children in churches that are shacking up. All around this nation, all around this country, the places I've been, at least in the, in the mostly the southern states, in uh, Indiana, and then I meet them at my job and all around where they're living together. Some of you did in past. You can't help what you did, but you can help what you teach. Don't allow guilt from the past or because of things you didn't do it right. Don't allow, don't, don't throw your children up in the wind saying, well, I did that. 
and I turned out all right. Adhere to the Word of God. God bless you. I love, I certainly don't show it like I need to, but I love everyone here. And I love the children. And I care about the children. Love America. I don't want socialism. That's a godless form of government. And our government ain't perfect now. But I want it to be restored. And it ain't going to happen unless the church is restored. And that's not going to happen unless the families are. Now I believe the Lord has given us a great opportunity here. I don't know of anywhere that's trying to hear to the Word of God any more fervently than here. I know the devil will try all he can to keep us from doing so. But you know what we need to be doing? We need to be spreading the truth with as much as we have within us for the good of people. Someone told me recently, you sound like you hate people. You take a standard. I love the Lord too. <laughs> Amen. I know you do, brother. And I need a you know, the word of God says I know I know him. I know him. I know you do. And the word of God says that uh, that we need to love the Lord. And you know what he says? You need to hate mother, father, brother, sister. All that means you need to put them second place to God. You need to put God above anyone else. Don't you compromise. No, I don't hate people. When church discipline's carried out, I don't hate them. I love them. And it's difficult. It's hard. I've seen people restored, and every one of them I want restored if possible. It's difficult. It's hard. It's God's Word. And you know what you have to tell people? People think, you see, they're thinking like a man. They're thinking carnally. They don't know no better. They've not been taught. But you just have to adhere to the standard of God's Word. God help you. Look at the Word of God. Pull out a concordance, study up on marriage, study up on divorce, study up on the Word of God, study up on what parents ought to be doing. So many other passages to look at. But study the Word of God, and then, in your home, teach it, live it. You know, you know if you just see me, or just hear me on Sundays, if I'm not endeavoring to live it, you're not going to pay much attention to me. There's a lot of parents that are, that are teach the Bible. Tell, now, Johnny, you know you need to be doing this, and they're not doing that at all. God bless you for Christ's sake. May the Lord help and restore the families of America. May the Lord restore the churches in America. And may it begin in your family, your homes, is my prayer for Christ's sake. Brother David.